And I don't know if you've ever sat in traffic and seen a, a way underutilized HOV lane with a car every you know, 200 yards scooting past. That's a way just to guarantee, guarantee that that lane gets its maximum usage of free flowing traffic. You never want to have that toll set at a level where it starts to back up. Variable rate tolling is simply where the toll rate changes based on time of the day and congestion level. Route 91 in Los Angeles is the most prominent example in the United States of that. Uh, there are others coming, again, slowly but surely. It's very simple. You're going to pay a lot to use Route 91 at rush hour, where you might save a half hour or 45 minutes on, on your way. You're going to pay much less to use it in the middle of the day or late at night when you might save, save five minutes. It's designed to maximize the free-flowing use of that particular route, so that it's always getting as much traffic as it can, but will never get backed up. Uh, this is important because, as, we're gonna as Professor Small is going to talk about in his paper, which you all have, it's very important to make sure that these additional capacity that you add through tolling gets its maximum usage, because that's what benefits the people who don't pay for it, who are in the other lane. So you get as many people off of that onto that variable price, variable price lane. Um, you've, uh, again, Route 91, it was actually so successful, and then they, they had some tr problems with, the, with some of the contractual agreement with uh, what the state of California could build alongside of it as that area grew, that the, the government had to buy Route 91 back from the investor. But it's still a variable price toll and still very successful. It's very interesting. There's some critics of it as a variable rate tolling assume that only the, it'll be used for the wealthy, the ones who can afford it every time. But research has shown there's all sorts of people who use it for all sorts of reasons. And many people who might, might just use it one time a week. Do you know what, what daycare centers charge if, if you're late to, to pick up your child? You know, that, that 10 bucks you might pay to get you there 20 minutes faster is going to save you a bundle of money if you're running late. There's also, if you're a salesperson on the way to a business meeting where being late would look terrible. There's all sorts of times and options where people are willing to pay that toll, where the next day they're probably not. Private operation of toll roads. I find this fascinating and uh, have ridden on both of these, these turnpikes. I'm, I spent a lot of time up in Chicago, northern, northern Indiana. The Chicago, has anybody here ridden the Chicago Skyway? And you probably, if you have, you probably, since it feeds into the Indiana Turnpike, you've probably ridden them both. A foreign consortium, Australian and Spanish, paid the city of Chicago $1.8 billion, ca cash on the table, like it's, a, like it's an old movie or something, you know, cash on the dollar, for a 99-year lease, lease, and this is very key, they did not buy it, they leased it out to operate the Skyway. And uh, that is money the city of Chicago then took and is using for all sorts of ways. $1.8 billion, upfront payment. Indiana got $3.5 billion for their Indiana Turnpike, which for a 75-year lease, which they're now put in the bank to use for transportation expenses all throughout the state. Obviously in Missouri, we don't have anything like this to lease out. The value of the Lake Ozark Community Bridge would be, it, it has a value for it, I don't want to deny it, but it would be dramatically less. But, um, and we'll get into some of the next slide or two, we're gonna get into some of the concerns with, with these ways of doing it, and there are legitimate concerns. One of my favorite what, sort of creative transportation in in Missouri, one of the few examples I know of are the reversible lanes outside of downtown St. Louis on I-70. They do a great job of uh, controlling the congestion traffic in, in 70. If you're there, there's three, two middle lanes that go eastbound in the morning, westbound in the evening, and, and uh, just thought I'd put that out there because we don't have a lot of creative examples in, in Missouri. I want to talk about Lake Ozark Community Bridge briefly. As we've discussed, it's the only told asset in Missouri. It's also the only Missouri Transportation Corporation project. This is a government, I talk about a lot when I talk about public-private partnerships. This is not a PPP. This is a, a government entity, a Missouri Transportation Corporation with a board of directors from the area. They run it. This is not a, a privately, they finance it through bonds and make it back to tolling, but it opened in 1998, cut the route around the lake by almost an hour, depending on the season, obviously. Uh, it's, uh, like, but it's been very successful. It is very popular. I've ridden it. Toll is two dollars and fifty cents in season, a dollar fifty out of season. So that when it's mostly locals using it, it the toll is is a significantly reduced. It is. It has been successful, and it has addressed a lot of needs. But its bonds were recently downgraded by Fitch Ratings, who is concerned that they're not willing to set the toll rate high enough to over the long run uh, address the bonds and they're. This is a very common 
concern and problem with government operated toll roads that for political reasons they keep the they subsidize the toll they're not willing to set set it what it needs to be to pay for the long term operation and then when they do inevitably have to raise it it's a dramatic increase all at once i think it's probably much better for small increases each year to deal with operating costs that's what you're going to see on the skyway and the turnpike up in chicago and indiana so i don't want mean to say here that this project is in financial difficulty because the bonds downgraded. They have normal ca enormous cash reserves, they're making all their payments. It's been very successful. I, there was talk, and I don't think it ever got beyond talk about something like this to address some traffic concerns at Table Rock Lake, but I believe that the stimulus funds went in that direction, so that talk is, is, a, is no longer needed. They're getting their improvements that way. Common issues with tolling and public-private partnership, toll rate regulation, you know, it's, it's a, Almost in areas of Europe, Latin America, where you, where you privately, where you predominantly finance your inner city transport via toll roads, what they found, and we've in the Missouri tr Changing Transportation Paradigm paper that you have, there's a lit review section that discusses this in detail. They found that with a lot of toll roads, they sort of end up competing against each other. That if one raises its toll too high, that somebody would be willing to drive a little bit out of the way and take another cheaper toll road. But in America, particularly in Missouri, where we have nothing, it's going to be necessary if toll roads start to come into play. They're going to be oftentimes sort of monopolistic. So some level of government regulation to, uh, to prevent those, to keep a limit on those tolls is probably necessary. Government subsidies of the toll road might seem strange, but I'm going to talk about this in more detail shortly. Length of franchise terms, very legitimate concern. How do you predict needs 99 years down the line or 75 years down the line? You, it's very, very hard. Uh, so it, in any of these deals nationally, if Missouri were ever to do anything like this, absolutely the government is going to have to take a very hard look at the length of these terms and, uh, and perhaps make them a little shorter. What that does is it's going to reduce your payment and what you get from those private companies. But that might be a trade-off well worth it. Non-compete agreements, sometimes these are a huge deal. With the Skyway, where you've got, in Chicago, we have local roads just all alongside of it, it's not a big deal. With the Turnpike, where it's the only real highway there for most, for most it's a very big deal, particularly as you get a little farther into Indiana. They have a very strict non-compete agreement where Indiana cannot build uh, other highways within a certain area without paying the, the operators a fee. Non-compete agreements are necessary. Nobody's going to invest something if the next year the government can build a free one one mile from it. But they're, again, very legitimate concerns and very important for, for governments to address on these, these, uh, these programs. Foreign company involvement, not a legitimate concern, in my opinion, unlike the others. If we go to war with Spain and Australia in those unlikely events, I, they can't just take their roads and, and leave. We can always keep, we can keep the road, we can keep the roads. They're, they're a lease anyway. If the war, if the Spanish-American war is renewed, I don't think that Cintas Corporation is going to uh, launch, launch behind the line strike from there, from the Chicago Skyway. So uh, I don't think there's, a lot of people do have c concerns with it. I think this is an example of insourcing, not outsourcing. And finally, toll booths, easy pass, and shadow tolls. We've talked about the toll booths. <laughs> Shadow tolls are very interesting. They're very common in the United Kingdom, and they're starting to be used on some ongoing projects in Florida. That's where a private company comes in, builds the road, finances the road, but then instead of collecting a toll on it, they, the government just counts all the number of cars that use the that road and, send, and pays that company based on the number of cars. The, the bad part of that is there's no market force in there to encourage people to, to limit their driving or when they use it, like a variable rate toll or tolling in general might do. The good part of it is that toll collection is between 10 to 20 percent of any toll route, so you're kind of knocking 10 to 20 percent off the cost right off the bat if you're not collecting a toll. So again, very common in the UK. Professor Ken Small's paper for the Show Me Institute. You all have it at your, your table. I'm going to discuss it briefly. It's a terrific paper. If you enjoy this issue, you are going to love this, this paper. He's one of the United States' premier transportation and sort of urban infrastructure economists out of the University of California, Irvine. I highly recommend it. Few of the, I just want to highlight a few of the, the great questions that he raises in the paper. He questions the assumption that tax exempt financing from a government is always better than uh, tax, non-tax exempt financing from private companies. As he points out,